we have a quorum, we'll call this meeting to order today. Uh, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a finance committee meeting and it is four o'clock on um, Tuesday. And so we're going to just go over these line items, all the budget. And uh, David sent out quite a bit of information, but we've already seen the budget once. Now it's just adjusted items. Um, I'm hoping to go through um, quickly a lot of the line items. Um, I don't know if we'll get, we don't want to take too long on this meeting. so. You know, if we have to do another one down the road, we do, but at least we have something we can look at and get an idea of um, now. Uh, so I wanted to do that. I know that we are going to be having a really tough time right now with um, the numbers because I'm hearing things like even the hotels besides for the taxes, they're giving back all, all the money that they had uh, planned for graduations that they had collected ahead of time. Now they have to give all that money back. So I've, I've heard some worries coming in from the, um, some of the hotel chains. So um, there's lots of worries there. Um, but anyway, so let's see what we can do to you know, scrub this budget as much as we can. And David's done a great job on, on sending it out to us, but this is such a, a, a difficult item right now. So let's just see if we can help them by uh, scrubbing these numbers. Any other thoughts or concerns? Um, so is uh, anything you guys want to look at first or should we just call uh, anybody? Do you, want me to, do you want me to summarize where we are? All right, go ahead, David, sure. Okay, so um, I went through the budget. I'm still tinkering around the edges, but the budget is balanced. Um, the way that I balanced it uh, is to, uh, uh, provide a overall strategy that extends for two years uh, so that the town is going to be able to manage the crises that may come in the next two years. Uh, I had a long conversation with Sean Cronin today with the Department of uh, Labor, Local Services, which is uh, the revenuers about uh, this current fiscal year and next current uh, next year um, there's a lot of uncertainty all over the place. We tip, typically have a house budget by now. I don't think that's going to happen until after July 1st. Um, there's a lot of worries that uh, uh, S&P is going to downgrade bond ratings. And the answer is from S&P is that no, they won't do that. So long as you have a plan. And so the plan that I put together, and this is all written out in the narrative, is the defense in depth plan. Uh, the attributes of the defense in depth is that uh, it takes into account the revised downward uh, uh, projections and revenues. Uh, the plan is a multi-year plan. Uh, the plan is adaptable and flexible to address whatever may come. Um, and the plan relies upon a progression of backstops reinforcement of reserves, judicial use of uh, free cash, um, transferring surplus free cash into uh, stabilization. Uh, and um, so it's got, it's got a lot of backstops, it's got a lot of measures that can be rearranged in order to address whatever may come. This is very important that we present this to the world as a way to uh, the downturn in the, the economy. Um, so that's where we are at this point. We have a plan, uh, it's flexible, it's adaptable, it's long-term. Uh, we have a balanced budget. Uh, we have contingency plans for the town meeting. One of the things that we'll be talking about tomorrow with the select board is uh, uh, filing with the Department of Revenue a 112th budget for the first month of FY21. Again, just as a contingency, I don't recommend this as a course of action, but just in case we don't make quorum at the annual town meeting, which by the way is June 18th, if in case we don't make the quorum that, that, uh, that night, we're not completely sunk come the beginning of the new fiscal year, we'll have 
will have some uh, ability to uh, uh, fund something until we have a chance to regroup. Um, and that being said, one of the glaring changes to the budget is the uh, non-funding of OPEB. And that's what I'm currently working on is trying to come up with ideas to get at least something going into the OPEB trust so that we can keep that effort going for the long term. So that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, uh, Unified Command is working with Randy Iser, the moderator, to come up with the logistics of town meeting. Um, and there'll be a lot of talk in the next couple of weeks about that. We need to be posting the warrant by June 10th. So if we want to think about June 10th as our deadline for getting things done, that's, that's a good day to uh, mark in your calendar. Uh, so if you want to turn to the budget, um, Amy, I think you had some ideas about the budget. Okay, so let's um, just jump in the budget. I mean, we'll have to, uh, touch, well, it would be number, we'll start with number, would be page 49 on our regular book, but which says, uh, which is starting with town hall items, right? The select board. I was just going to go down any of these, seeing if there's any changes, anything that looks good, any questions that we may have um, quickly. Um, so I'm just pulling out my new sheet. And I don't think at first I have any questions. Uh, if anybody else does, I just, if you have a question, uh, please just jump in. All right. Otherwise, I'm just going to shoot off my questions. <laughs> All right, so on the select board, uh, let's see. The only adjustments it looks like really we made were to the licensing coordinator that just changed it to the 2%. So we didn't do the step right now. Um, and that's, and you're we're not going to do the stipends right now for the interns. We're not going to do those. So that looks like the two major changes, and I didn't really have much more to add to that, except for uh, – and so, David, it says our dues went up quite a bit, and our board stocks are up quite a bit, and that is something we have to do, correct? There's no way around that. Uh, the dues went up because uh, we're seeing uh, much more activity by the select board members. Okay. Um, okay. And we never saw that before. So okay. uh, they're they're getting professional development. This is something to be in, to encourage. I just wanted to make sure that there was, there was no room on that. I didn't think there was, but thank you. Okay. There's no questions. We'll go to the next one. Town administrator. So, David, on this one, when is the new town administrator going to start? That's something that we're going to be talking about uh, tomorrow. Uh, with the, uh, we were thinking that this person would start in August, uh, and now it looks like it's going to be uh, September. So, I took the um, the savings from uh, two months savings, and I applied that to the uh, the budget here. Uh, Ten thousand two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollar decrease. I I thought she was going to be doing uh July, so I had so you said two months. I only see one month. Yeah. So uh, the recommendation from the recruiting company is that we're not getting the kind of activity that we had hoped for on the um, on the resumes. Okay. Uh, the resumes are due on Monday next, May 11th, uh, and we have about 21 resumes at this point, and they were hoping for 30 to 40 resumes. Um, so they're recommending a three-week delay in the deadline. Um, if we uh, grant that three-week delay, then we are uh, in a position to save us $10,000 in this line item. So, so if I so if we take the salary of ninety thousand dollars, that is seven thousand five hundred per month. So my 
So if we skip July, that's 7,500. If we skip, um, and so now we don't do September, or I'm sorry, August, and we don't hire until September, why can't we take out 15,000? Yeah, I put in some cushion in case uh, they're able to start sooner. Okay. Uh, the, and this will depend a lot on what the select boards say about extending the deadline tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever savings we get here, I'm throwing it into OPEB and also some of the building uh, operation budget. Okay. Yeah, so I just think we could probably pull off another 7,500 in this one. All right. Great. Uh, so the next one is, uh, I would skip finance committee reserve. Let's see, let's go right to, uh, Uh, an accountant you made some adjustments to let's see yeah so so we have a vendor that we were uh, going to pay 37,584 uh, and i just can't support that expense so i made that adjustment uh, so it went down by 37,584 great so that's not the assistant town accountant that you just 37 that that's not a person that we have that was a vendor that's a vendor vendor david i have a question on that is that mary yep so are we not going to have uh accounting services in town hall whatsoever anymore well we're talking to uh, eric kinshiff we're hoping that he can scoop mary into his organization Okay. So that we can we can get that through the uh, other professional services. Okay. All speculative. I mean, nobody's really been talked with, so we have to be careful with that information. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, privileged information right now. Okay. okay. All right. So the next would be. Uh, assessors um, assessors we uh, okay so I don't really see much for a change that you yeah, had I didn't, I didn't touch I didn't touch them now what I'm seeing though the other thing is I'm seeing and each one of these, they all have their own office. It, it, it's it's kind of interesting. Each department has its own office equipment and office software maintenance. And I'm seeing it in the building, um, some of it in a couple different spots. That something we need to look at consolidating? I mean, is that something that, I mean, do we really, or I don't know, what are your thoughts, David? Is that? Uh, wherever possible, we should consolidate. Um, there's a number of specialized supplies and equipment that uh, particular functions need. Um, so uh, as a safety measure, I have kept those in various operating budgets. If it seems like that's a specialized um, form or set of books or whatever is needed that uh, wouldn't apply to any other department. Okay. Amy, the, yeah. uh, this is Sue. Um, like the software maintenance, that's for, for Dan, it's for vision. For me, it's for VADAR. Um, and um, it, it's, it's licensing agreements essentially, but they're put under that because of um, the uniform accounting code. Okay, so like Sue, I was thinking, um, so I'm glad you mentioned it, because like VADAR I saw under the tax accountant too. Do you have, do you each have to pay your own separate or is it, I, I just was wondering if we were hitting it by mistake twice. No, it's seats. 
It's, oh. it's how many seats you have uh, uh, with available applications. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So assessors is done. Let's see. Um, council assessors. Treasurer. Let's try treasurer. I have a question. Uh, Linda's here. Who is the assistant treasurer? Or, I know Joni okay. but I don't okay. know now. For yeah. Yeah. Well, there are tech. We actually have two people appointed at this time, and we're overlapping because of uh, Joan's experience. She is still treasurer. Uh, she is assistant treasurer, but that's not what this line is. Uh, she's there so that she can handle banking because she's been doing it so long, and they know her. But our um, the one in uh, in the budget is Dee Dee. Um, okay. This this is ten hours of Dee Dee and. David, I think she has 30 over in building inspector. Um, yes. We weren't sure where we were going with this and how it was going to work out. Um, we were hoping for better, better coverage, but here's where we are. So um, yeah. here's where we are. Um, okay. she, she's, got, uh, she's got 10 hours in there and we'll, um, we'll work with it. Yeah. And so I did notice on the planning board, and then we'll go through that. Um, the planning, I spoke to the planning board, and um, they did, and, and in there we made an adjustment. I'm sorry to skip, but we're talking about Dee Dee. Right. And they really need Dee Dee. They need the administrative part of it. It's the answering the phone calls, the, the paperwork. They want the paperwork, help with the paperwork. So they're not, not pleased about taking out the 5,800 for DD, they're going to need that. So is that going to affect your hours? I mean, if you, we need to put that back in. Um, DD was always prepared to go to 40 hours. So I think that the planning board had five and we were not quite sure how it was going to fall, whether uh, we didn't know in inspectors, if, the, if hers, at one point we were thinking that might go to full time for her over there and we'd be looking for another position over an assistant treasurer. And, the fact that it's DD now isn't necessarily um, how it ought to be funded going forward, but this is how it's worked out that we do have one person and obviously we're not going, we're not at a time right now where we're going to be doing any expanding. So um, we do have to fit DD into those three spots, whether it's 35 or 40 hours. Um, okay. I, I don't, I don't know, but that's all she, I mean, she only has 40 hours and I, you know, 10, here and 30 over an inspector is probably about as cut as uh, as much as we can cut those hours so she could have another five over in planning if you wanted to do that okay otherwise, so you're, did, otherwise you're into another person no yeah i don't want to but i don't right. want to so like if you have 10 here and you're doing 30 for the building and then you do another five for the planning now we're at 45 hours no no oh no 30 oh Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, she has, David, uh, how she, many does she, how many does she have over in? Uh, she has thirty hours in the building department. She has ten hours oh, of view. That's forty hours. Oh, okay, hours she's already at forty then. Okay, she's already at forty. Um, how would we do? I don't. I don't know how we would do that then. I was. I just we was would, off, we, obviously. I was thinking of it wrong. <laughs> If we're going to give uh, planning boards more of her time, we're going to have to take it away from some other department. Tough being in such high demand. Well, it, de it depends. Um, some of it, David, if it's a, it's a use of a person, I think that we can um, cover some of those hours and not worry about we, where it's being paid for. I certainly don't, I'm not concerned that she be used for planning board purposes um, the same way she's used for zoning board for time to time. And I don't think that either the inspector or I would be saying, wait a minute, those three hours were mine. So I think, again, we if we just shuffle forward as is, uh, it, it might work out. I think that Amy, um, yes, planning board, and I don't want to speak for them. I know they didn't want her hours 
cut because they do want the assistance, but I know that they're also talking about, which was the other board, was that zoning that was also talking about? CPA is looking is, for administrative help, the um, um, what's, conservation. What's conservation, yeah, conservation. So yeah. they're, ta they're talking about whether they can put their positions together differently. Right. So, and I, and I don't know where that would, I don't know how that would fall, but I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm open to sharing as the need is there, but if you're looking for, you know, really needing solidly five or 10 hours a week, I, I couldn't give it all away, but I'm willing to, you know, no, share. but I'm thinking maybe, but I'm just looking at the dollar amounts is when we're doing the butt line items. And so instead of funding the entire budget for DD, I don't, I don't think it really matters who you, everybody's going to use it and you're all going to share but yep, yep. Um, just rather not fund the budget for 45 hours. If we fund right. the budget for 40 hours, it's fine. I say, let's just take another five out of the, down the road, out of the building, you know, and, um, then you like, have to look at, but then you have to look at pay rates in each department. Yeah. Because I think there's different pay rates between Linda's department and, and building inspector. After, I okay, after I, I don't, I don't know. Year. No, it's the same rate. Oh, okay. So what we need to do is figure out what DD's salary is, times it by 2%, and then divide it by the number of hours needed for each budget. All right. So her 2% uh, increase is 22.63 per hour. Three. 52.2 .2 weeks in a year. Uh, so what is her salary? I'm sorry, I, I started. At 2% increase over current levels, it's 22.63. Okay. An hour? That's yes. uh, per hour. Okay, so I got forty-seven thousand five two hundred and fifty-one forty-four. So now I got to get figure out. Uh, we can go through, and we can afterwards do. Let's see. So out of that, ten hours to treasurer, thirty-five or twenty-five hours to building, and um, five hours to planning. On that, on that increased rate. Can we take a look at the planning board budget's history of uh, spending on that position? Okay. Uh, why don't we put this in a crib and uh, we'll come back to it when we get to the planning board. Sounds good. Okay, next. Uh, before, before we leave the, the treasurer, on February 19th when I prepared the initial budget, uh, we had not uh, worked out a final contract for the treasurer. Now we do, and so that uh, uh, item of is not seventy four three oh seven. It's seventy five even. So that's the only other change to that uh, budget. And what is the percentage change? Do we know that? Uh, I'd have to look it up. I think it's two percent, but uh, that makes it two percent even. Okay. Something like well, that. It's it's a little different. A little bit, a uh, little difficult to compare because we're doing, going from a leap year to a uh, to a regular year. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. That, um, it's it's a salary. Yeah, one of the yeah. things is when we are going through some of this stuff, and, and and some of them are higher than others. I mean, that doesn't look like that would be more than two percent, really. But um, in some of them are only two point something. But there are some that are up there a little bit higher, and it's hard to you know. Say, tell everyone, I'm sorry, I can't do your stuff, I can't do this, um, and give the head of the department 5% increase or, or more. Um, that's So even though there's contracts, I think we need to, and, and we talked about it, I, I mentioned it to David, uh, to the rest of the team, um, we could go back at some point, I'd like to go to these, you know, whoever's in contracts and say, you know, if you're going to get an increase per contract, can you put it off a year? We're going to look at that. That's 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 leadership. And then I also think we ought to look at the unions. If, if we're saying, oh, we have to give all this extra money because it's the union, 
well, the unions are going to be happy to keep jobs and we're not going to have to let people go. They're, they, they may work with us and not just do maybe the smaller 2% increase and not take the full amount. So I, I think that would be a, a good thing for everyone. That's something we need to discuss with the select board. Exactly. Right. I thought it's something that we should um, know about it before tomorrow because it probably will be up for discussion. Yep. As long as everything you're doing is across the board and, uh, and fair. Exactly. Or across the board. Right. Yep. Perfect. So uh, I, I brought... I summons planning. Uh, I got bills. So when you get to planning board, um, or if you want to jump to it, because I, I I told him to come on upstairs for this. So because we were oh, talking okay. about Dee Dee. You want to go jump to planning? Uh, just so because it's still is jump to planning, yeah. which was normally planning is on page fifty-seven in our book, but let's see where it is in the new pages. Um, I got planning out. So, and the planning board, my recommendations, unless we talk differently, is I would like to recommend the administrative assistant, DD's five powers, go back in. I would like to recommend the planning services continue. Um, we're going to, because they, they, they are looking at an increased planning services is the uh, planning for, you know, the Pioneer Bank Planning Commission. I'd like to see that I continue, but I would like to remove, and I know it's select board, but I wanted to get the feeling from the finance committee. I would like to remove at this time the 35000 for the planner and keep that not completely gone on the back burner down the road. I definitely think we want to help the planning board. I just don't think um, we need to do it mm -hmm. funding this time. I have some thoughts on that matter. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so, you, you know, unquestionably the local economy, the regional economy has taken a tremendous hit, uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, at some point, conditions will be better and we will need to regrow the economy as quickly and as sustainably as we can. Um, it seems that uh, that effort would start sometime in January 2021. Uh, I think that you need to have some sort of economic development planner working for you. Uh, at that time in order to facilitate and prop up the local economy and its recovery. Uh, so I think that it's $35,000 that would uh, fund a full-time position from January 1st. I think you're going to need that. Okay, thank you. Um, the one other thing I wanted to add, and then we, maybe we could have uh, also Bill jump in. The, I would, one thing with that is I do, you are saying it's after January, but planning services, there any help with the planning department? And I'm also going to talk to this a little bit about the HR department as well down the road, is because we have two administrators at the end of the year, I, I know you're going to be doing some training, but I'm expecting this person, whoever the new town administrator is, to be somewhat educated and somewhat um, experienced. So I don't think it's going to be a full-time thing that you have to, you would be able to help out in other areas um, uh, because we've done this all along without these other departments and you're going to be there. We're going to have mm -hmm. two town administrators for a while. So this is some great stuff we're going to be able to work on um, for the end of the year going into next year. Um, and if things change, Maybe we can outsource, but I think we need to give the planning board time to have a whole big uh, plan involved in what they're exactly going to need. And I think the job description and all that is going to um, take some time. So to do it now, um, I'm going to let Bill speak and see what he thinks. Um, I don't disagree with what David says uh, about needing something in economic development, but that's not what we do. So. Um, 
in other towns, perhaps it is something. They have planning and economic development as a department, I think, in Northampton. But um, we're not in that, we're not going down that path. At least we haven't discussed going down that path. Uh, certainly watching some of the select board uh, discussions of this budget item and having talked to some select board members, uh, they have a vision for what this person will do. Um, but it's not what, what we are defining, what I am defining as our needs at the moment. Now, we haven't had a lot of opportunity for further discussion on this as a board um, under the circumstances of the last I mean, maybe it's something we'll take up tonight um but uh there seems to be a lot of areas that this person is being projected as the the solution to um and you know at some level we need someone to stuff envelopes and i'm not sure a full-time economic development planner is going to want to be doing that, although I'm sure they would be capable of doing that. Um, we're, I don't know what we're getting at the moment. So uh, I, think, I think there needs to be some more discussion uh, with both human resources, select board, planning board, about what we are, what we are looking for short term, as well as long term, and uh, that really hasn't—we haven't had a chance to make that happen yet. Great, great. Thank, thank you. Um, Bill, uh, may I jump in? I, yeah. I, I agree with what Bill said. I, I think that when this was put together, we didn't have the situation we're in now, and I think that really we should step back from it. I would uh, support taking it out of the budget right now, but I think that. Um, the select board, the planning board, possibly finance, ought to be looking down the road, as you say, for what kind of help are we going to need? What are we going to need to help kick this economy locally back up into considering this uh, pandemic and the shutdown, which is just unprecedented. So we may need to plan something that's completely different from what you've you envisioned, what the select board thought they were envisioning, you know, what everybody thought we needed. I don't think even applies anymore. I think we need to look at a, 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 a succinct plan dealing with the problems that we're facing right now and how to improve the situation and help our local businesses get back on a, a decent footing um, so that our revenues come back up and our employment comes back up. Um, so I, I would, uh, you know, I think, I think hiring a particular planner based on what we thought we needed, I, I agree, Bill, it needs to be reconsidered completely. Just taking that out completely then? Um, Alexi, Valerie, keeping the okay. They come no, out. I have a question. Um, I when you talk about um, a, a planning person to come and help with revitalizing the economy, um, what kinds of things are we talking about? Because it seems like the skill set to do those things is different than the skill set to do the others? Well, there's a number of uh, planning tools that uh, one can employ in order to support businesses, one of which is the tax incremental financing tool, um, providing for tax uh, credit, uh, basically tax discount on new construction with job growth associated. Uh, there's uh, District improvement financing, if you wanted to take a particular area and start developing it and uh, use the taxation from that property in order to improve the infrastructure there. Uh, there are other things that you can do in order to attract businesses to the community, retain the jobs that you have, grow the tax base, uh, grow the op uh, employment opportunities, um, work with the business community in order to find out what their needs are uh, and see if you can't translate that into uh, public policy. Hmm. Okay. I, I did want to chime in. We do, we just started this, this 
we just started this um, this year was uh, a committee, and it was uh, um, economic development and um, affordable housing committee. Um, you know, housing committee. That's what it was, and and so it was just it was, you know we have someone from planning board, someone from the um, uh, Dylan, myself, Bill. Um, we also have Christian Stanley on it. So there's quite a few people looking at this right now. So it is something for our economic development. We're talking about, we're meeting, we're we're doing this, and it's not anything that's going to cost the town any money at this point. We we probably could get an employee down the road, but right now, we, you know, we are looking at this. Just wanted to point that out. That's awesome. All right. So, if this position and this will have to be discussed with the uh, uh, select board. If this position is eliminated, then I recommend that that money go into OPEB. Okay. Well, I, yeah, we're, I, I think that um, that would be something that, that would be a good call. Whatever you know, we felt was the right thing. You know, I don't know where the money would go. I'm just trying to scrub it as much as possible. But I definitely think OPEB would be something we want to save our bond rating. So that would be good. Linda? And then, um, yeah, I, we, uh, we talked about the assistant hours before Bill got up here. So what you've done is taken, what you're suggesting is taken another five hours out of, um, oh, on the OPEB? I'm sorry, we're asking about, about OPEB? Oh, yes, no, I, I just. <laughs> yes, I something into OPEB, yes, I, I agree with some floor level, even if not necessarily fully funding, but I don't want to leave it, I don't want it knocked down to zero. So anywhere so something like that can come in, that's fine. But um, now on the, I think there, I think, I, as I understand it, you're talking about netting out, so taking out the 35 but putting back the 58. Yes. Okay. So so it would be the difference. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, quick uh, question: Does that 58 need to be 5906 at Dee Dee's rate? 2263 times five times 52.2. I'm not sure if it's 50, I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm not sure if it's 5818 or what it exactly is, but we got to figure out that her exact amount of out, you know, her salary, which we just did, which is the 47,251. And I have to take five hours out of that. Right. I mean, I just did the math on my phone and okay. it came out to 5906. Okay. It'll be a wash. Yeah, I I get it. I just just so that we're not letting a thousand dollars here and a thousand dollars there go. So, yep. yep. Okay, so it looks like twenty nine thousand ninety four dollars is what we'll be putting towards something like OPEC. Twenty nine thousand ninety four is what I came up with. Okay. Anything else on uh, planning? We good for now. Good for now. Okay. All right. Let's move. Uh, let's jump back to where we were um, and go to uh, tax collector. Let's see. In your budget, there, the second line down, had an increase of three thousand oh ninety six. Okay. And that was my mistake. I meant to uh, put a minus sign in front of that. Okay. So. Yeah, because I had the numbers a little off. You know, um, when I looked at the, the things that you had down below, and I did the 35 hours uh, times 52.2 times 35.15, I came up with 64,219, but I think that's just off. 
that's not including the raise of 2%. So then I have also, the, if you did the second line where you made your adjustment, David, you said 35 hours times 52.2 times 2509, and this is for the line item for the water and sewer bill coordinator. If I did that trans, if I did that out through the calculator, I'd come up with $45,839, and we have it at 52000 You have it at 52,000? Yeah, yeah, Amy, what he did in the um, admin, add, delete, revise for COVID-19, yeah. $3,096 that he has there, that should have been a reduction. Okay. Oh. I didn't. He doesn't have the minus sign, in, or, you know, he doesn't have it bracketed. Oh, so if I if I take that three thousand ninety six, I mine it off the fifty two thousand, then I will come up with the right number. Yeah. Oh. I'm a little bit closer now. I'm at forty nine thousand. No, well, that's because you're increasing that person's hours. No, I'm not increasing anybody's hours. It's because you're going from a leap year to a regular year. That's the reason why there's uh, the numbers no. are off a little bit. No, so no, no, I mean, if I calculate instead of 35 hours, if I calculate 37 and a half hours times 52.2 times 29.09, I come up with 49,000. Yeah, she's not getting uh, 37 and a half hours. She's at 35 hours. David, okay. drop us back to the 35 hours, Amy. Okay, Okay. so now if I take the 35 hours times the 52.2 times the 29.09, I come up with $45,839. $25.09 per hour. $25.09 per hour. Yeah. You want to just double check that calculation? It's 35 times 52.2 times 29.09. Right. So it should come up 25 to. 2509 times 35 times 52.2. Whoops. <laughs> I come up with 45,839.43. Correct. Correct. And the, I just adjusted it a little bit because we're going from that leap year to a regular year. So you get to the 2%. Otherwise, you get 1.64%. Okay. So the so instead of doing it, you should have been just instead of the 52 hours, you should just do 52 hours instead of 52.2. Right? Uh, however, I did no, it. 52.2 is what you do on a, a leap year. On a non leap year, 52.4 is what you do on a leap year. That's the difference. 52.4? Yeah. On a leap year, which is this current fiscal year. So next right. year it goes back to the 52.2. Okay, I thought you were doing the 52.2 for a leap year and I thought it was regular. No. Leap year is every presidential election. Yeah. Okay, so you'll have to just go in and make, there will be some adjustments there it looks like. So, so whatever it is for the 35 hours. Well, so I'm, I'm, I, that's the only question I had with uh, tax collector. I think that was that was really really it. Unless anybody else has anything, it was just my math. I was questioning about. Okay. All right, if no other questions, let's, uh, town clerk. Uh, I don't think, I'm trying to miss town clerk here. Uh, 
Uh, town clerk, can you, if you don't mind looking at that. Uh, I don't really have any adjustments. I don't. I think you you just took out you just made everybody two percent, which was perfect. So I don't really have any questions unless anybody else does. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, town council. I don't really. I think did you make an adjustment in town council, David? Thousand dollars. How much? Ten grand. So are we funding? You're taking ten out. Yep. That's just because we. You don't foresee us needing. I mean, is there? I don't know. That's, that's just a lot to take out. I guess that's fine. Um, I'm fine with taking out of town council. I just want to make sure we're not shorting ourselves. There. We, prob we probably are. Okay. Hmm. All right, something just to double check before we finish the budget, you, you know, just to take a second look at towards the end. All right, you want to go to human resources? Yep. Okay. All right, so on human resources, the benefits coordinator, that's just Joni, and that's her full salary, it looks like, at 2% increase. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to, um, the next is just the uh, human resource salary. Now I see what you have down below. Uh, so we need to fund four, four months of, of Ed, right? Cause he needs uh, in this budget four months because, yep. okay. It says, because he's going to be gone how many months? He's, well, we don't know if he's expected to be gone, and Ed's on the line here, so he can talk to this more directly. But he's expected to be deployed for nine months out of the 12 months of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, he will be here in July, and then he'll be in for the remaining two months of FY21. Actually, David, that may be changing. My my date might be moving up to the beginning of July. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, but the four months is roughly correct. So even if it's at the beginning of July, you can expect the standard deployment to be 10 to 11 months. Um, so if you include the four because sometimes it's shorter or, you know, maybe you get injured or something like that, you come home a little early, it allows you a little wiggle room. But so okay, so you're gonna say nine months, of, and that's just a, a month here and there. I was just wondering because the four or nine, I was like, okay, well, now I'm at thirteen months. <clears throat> yeah, so I was the the I was gonna use some vacation time for the month of July, um, but um, it doesn't look like um, I'll be doing that. I'm gonna take a short unpaid leave of absence, um, probably from the last week of June. Depending, it depends on when they change this deployment date, moving it up a week or, or two. So, okay. Okay. So I, had a, I had a month of overlap between uh, uh, Ed O'Connor and Deb Radway. Okay. So, uh, the next item is, uh, or well, the next thing in my question is it looks like that. So, according to my understanding, the salary is 70000 but you're taking a 5% increase? Who's taking a 5% increase? Is that correct? Are you, you're oh, increasing 5%? No. So my contracted amount for my first year, Amy, was uh, 72, I think. And then um, the second year contract was 73.5. But I believe it was budgeted at 70, but they got um, a little late in, in the hiring process. So um, when I negotiated, I just had negotiated to have the same pay rate that I had for the city of Worcester. Um, so okay. 72 was about the same, or yeah, 72 was about the same rate. Okay, so we posted 70, but you, when you, con when you negotiated, you negotiated, so what you're actually making now is 72,000, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, 
but you're still going to come under budget because I wasn't here for the entire fiscal year. Okay. Okay, but for next next budget, it's not at seventy three. You're at seventy two thousand. No, next the next budget cycle, I would con my contract is seventy three five. Okay. July first. Okay, and is, and then the difference there is is that just two percent? I didn't calculate that out. Is that what? Um, I'm. Where, where I'm, is your increase coming from? Why I just didn't know what the increase was for. Uh, that's just what I negotiated with the select board. Give me two seconds. I'll give you a percentage. Okay. Are you? Did you negotiate Ed, every year for something for the select board? Is there is there my, a dollar amount or a percentage? My initial contract, Amy, is only uh, two years. So, okay. Um. Almost have a number for you. Okay. Made a typo. It's yeah, it comes out to two point oh eight percent, but I, okay. I think I just did the rough math, and that's kind of where I arrived at. Well, my biggest thing is I don't want to show a, uh, an increase of five percent for um, human resources when nobody else is getting it. When your person down below you is only getting two percent. I wouldn't do that, Amy. That's not my style. Yeah, <laughs> but so I'm just looking at the numbers. So um, the other thing is. So that I understand is how we all fund Fred. I I will once again. I am just um, and I know it's talked about and it's a select board decision. I am just not on board with having a uh, temporary person here at all. Um, I rather take that line item right out. But with the temporary person, and that is my opinion because we haven't had an HR. It's great having one, but we haven't had one for years and years and years. We're asking a lot of all of our employees and to have someone even, and I even got an email from a, a citizen that went through Randy, who then sent it to me, that they couldn't believe we would hire someone at a time like this, even though that they're not being an employee, they're just being hired because they must have been watching one of the uh, meetings that the select board did that. Um, so it's just, I would like to, and, and I'm, I'm just putting it out there, my recommendation is not to have, it's great to have that person on back, but not to, not that too many hours, 20 hours, um, especially when we have David as our backup, especially for half a year. So I would, I, my opinion is not to have that. Does anybody else want to chime in? I agree. I've got an opinion. I do also. So my opinion is to say you're looking at uh, the renewals of all six union contracts uh, come June 30th, 2021, mm -hmm. which means you're going to be in extensive negotiations uh, November through uh, May of next year. Um, and you want to have somebody who has experience making those negotiations, doing those negotiations. Um, and that person's not going to be me. I think that you're better served by having a professional in that position uh, during those negotiation uh, months. Well, you know the history, and you've done it, and you and you and the select board have done it for all these years, all those negotiations, and um, I, I, you know, so you have the experience of it, of how to do it. But I will not be here. Oh, okay. I, I think I think we're looking at a little short-sighted, Amy. You know, and okay. I, I say that respectfully, of course. Um, you know, uh, there's already been a major um, change, I think, for a lot of folks having HR around, and from from where I see it, it's positive. Um, you know, especially with some of the larger departments, DPW, police. Uh, there's less calls to to, to town council, uh, not town council, excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, town council with the. Um, uh, KP law, you know, having somebody with knowledge of the labor laws that can dedicate their time into their effort to, you know, what is essentially half of the budget, half of the budget is salary. It only makes sense to have a seasoned professional um, managing that one that can coach managers through the, the step discipline process, because uh, there's a return on investment on that, you know, getting folks to turn their performance around coaching managers on to how to best utilize their, their, their budget and tying that to, to performance management. There's really a lot to it. That's more than just, okay, hire someone, or maybe you can fire them or yeah, write them up. 
it's, you know, in working for a private organization, I'm sure you rely on the value of your HR department. It's no different for a public organization. And I, I agree with what you're saying, and that's why you're here, because those are all good arguments, and that's why they've actually decided to, let's say, let's look at the HR. But we've been going on years and years, and this is your first year, and this is not something that um, we haven't handled in the past. Not that, not that we couldn't handle it better having you, but I'm just saying, can we get by? And at a time like today, I think there's times that you need to, you need to get by. Um, and do what we've been doing. I don't think that the additional is, is good at this time. And that, and, and I just that it's, it's, that's just my opinion. I don't think that we we need to have any. I think we need to do a hiring freeze, and we don't need to have anybody else at this time um, come in. Amy, okay. can I make a comment? Sure. Um, and it's it's more as a taxpayer than anything else. Of course. Um, you know. If, if you want to cut that, what I would suggest is that we ask Deb, Deb Radway if she would be interested in consulting for union negotiations, because that's really an important part of our budget. Okay, so maybe we could readjust and look at it for just that particular pur purpose. Um, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. So I don't know if we can get a dollar amount um, or how long that takes. I don't, that, but. Um. David, you would have a, a good clue on that. You have done it for years. Yeah, I've done it for years. Um, you know, some years go very quickly. Some to, are a real slog. Uh, I was reviewing this information with Ed just the other day. Um, I think that um, there's a certain amount of strategizing that's going to have to go into thinking about the contracts and the renewals. <laughs> Obviously, um, money will be tight next year as well as this year. Um, there are a number of things that are in the union contracts that cost us money, which are not salaries. Uh, I think we need to uh, probably spend a couple of months just thinking about what do we need to do in order to coordinate three union negotiations, as well as three negotiations with the schools in order to strengthen managerial rights and reduce the number of ancillary costs that are so that um, that go along with this. And then who knows, we may get another union. I keep on hearing voices talking about that. So uh, I would say it would take a minimum of five months of uh, union contract negotiations to get uh, all of these settled. Five months to negotiate? That seems like a lot, but easily and then some. And if we don't come to an agreement, Amy, then we move to impasse and arbitration, and that could be potentially more expensive. Um, you know, I, we're already saving seventeen thousand dollars out of the budget. I, I would be remiss if I did not insist that having a seasoned HR professional in place for the duration of my deployment. I do have a question for you, Ed. How did how did we come about uh, this this um, temporary person? Um, did we? I, uh, I asked out? around. <laughs> I asked around to my peer network if they knew of anyone looking for you know part time or contract assignments. Um, I was floated around a couple of names, and uh, Deb was the one of the few that was interested that had the solid core qualifications uh, that lives in the area. Um, so I just. Did a little dig and did my homework. Don't we usually, don't we, if we're going to do something like that, don't we usually post for something like that? Uh, generally, but uh, I, I believe we're looking at a, a contract arrangement. Um, I, I could be wrong, but um, yeah, I don't know Deb, so there's no real conflict of interest. I didn't just suggest a friend or anything like that. Oh, can I chime in for a second? Sure. Um, as a business person, um, I hear all your arguments about human resources and I appreciate them, but 
one thing that strikes me is the Excuse town is never. I have a bar. The town is never going to be in a stronger position for negotiating than now. If, if unions or anyone can't understand that we're going to be short of money, they're just being obstreperous, and we need to, I don't know, deal with them on a different level than just negotiating. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, so, I, I, so I, think, I think we're getting kind of into an area where we're beginning to talk about strategy in a little bit more focused way, and maybe that's not a good idea right now. Well, what I was trying to point out is maybe negotiating is not going to be so complex this year because we're just going to be flat out broke. Um, I don't think we're going to be flat out broke. The budget seems to be well balanced as as proposed, and it does allow for some flexibility over a multi year period. Um, should we be conservative? Absolutely. And I feel like we've done that with this budget proposal. I'm sorry, Linda, were you going to say something? Uh, no, 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 you go ahead. I just, just before we're done, I want to. All the public health experts seem to be predicting a huge second wave. Uh, so if we're not flat out broke now, it's not looking good. But I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, our budget assumes a second wave come the fall, right, David? It actually assumes two waves, uh, one in uh, July, August, another one in November, December. Can, can I make a suggestion in the interest of time? We table this particular budget go back to Deb and see if there's some alternative arrangement that can be made just for the negotiation. And then we can make a decision and more informed decision that we have no alternatives. We have an alternative. Do we want to go with one or the other? We can do that. And just move on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I look at it as the employees of the town are part of the town, whether they're union or not. We all are going to be working as a team. We're all going to have to work as a team to protect the town. And I think that, yes, I agree that, that negotiations will be very different because it's very clear we're not trying to be uh, parsimonious. We are dealing with a real crisis. And I think everyone who has a job right now needs to recognize that, that we're all fortunate to be working right now because there's a lot of people out of work and who may get back out of work later um, if a second or third wave comes. So. I just think that we should approach all of our employees as partners in this and moving forward. And I think that's the way we have to look at it. Everybody's going to have to be practical. Everybody's going to have to realize this is a international crisis, yet alone our low, on our local level. So let's let's move this forward and to just table this section and see if we can make some quicker progress on some of these other issues or easier progress. Amy, you okay with that? I'm good with that. Able and it sounds good for now. Okay. I just wanted the, my views to be what, what, what I thought out there, that's all. I understand. Uh, jumping to the next is uh, building town operations. Um, I think this is a building, uh, town building operations. I think you're gonna have to look at this a little more. Uh, David, think, I, I think he did. Um, I noticed when I went to look, I saw electricity, electricity, but then I didn't see any heating costs. Where was the, I could not figure out where the heating costs were because um, it says heat and gas, but that was only for town hall and the public safety. I didn't see, and my understanding is there is, in the North Hadley Hall, there's a propane tank, so I didn't see where that was. And we also have a propane tank at the senior center. Now, the heating, my understanding for the library is electric, so that would be fine, but some of these others... I And David, you might have, might, might have already adjusted these, if you could. Yeah, so this is, this is an ongoing homework project, so I'm still tinkering with this particular budget. Uh, it does take into account that we'll have a net increase of two buildings. Uh, we don't have any experience with three of these new buildings that are going in. Uh, we, um, you know, this is, this is something that, uh, this is one of the budgets that I fret about the most because we don't have history. We're increasing our, our overall costs. We're changing systems. Um, so I'm trying to be as um, 
conservative as I can with this budget, but also as trying to be as realistic as I possibly can. So lots, lots to continue to tinker with on this one. I, I figured so. And David, I have to say one of the things that I have the most trouble with, I think this is how I see um, when you do the budget sometimes, I feel like I am playing a game with you where it's the cups and you got a bean under this cup and you're moving the cups and I'm trying to follow the bean, which, which one you got it under. <laughs> we, get, we get moving. We're like, okay, we took it out of this budget. We put it to this one. And trying it, it, it's, it's crazy. So once it gets all settled, it's good. And then we'll have it in one spot. <laughs> yeah. So this is a consolidation budget, something new and different, so that we uh, can keep uh, the department heads' attention focused on their primary function. Uh, we want the f uh, chief of fire, chief of police, the town administrator, be thinking about strategy and process and policies, and not worrying about the water bill. Uh, so that's why I've tried to consolidate as much as I can into this so that we have one, one budget that'll handle the, uh, the, the operational costs for the buildings and one person is in charge of it. Yeah. And yeah, we don't have a whole lot of history with this, so um it'll take us a year or so in order to come up with some sort of track record so we'll be able to feel a little bit more comfortable uh the the, the uh, my intention is not to try to hide costs here this is this is simply trying to make the town more efficient and accountable so i was wondering if we could just take um and, and do a quick jump of something um, just because I need, I need five minutes just to finish um, closing up shop here. <laughs> um, yep. I'm still on and listening. Um, maybe if you don't mind, because I've heard this before, can we jump and maybe David, you just quickly talk a little bit about the revenue side um, um, just because I've heard it. Um, All right, so Talk about that. Amy, we have a hard stop at 6.30 when we lose the Zoom meeting. Oh, absolutely. We have, yeah, okay. I, I'd rather stop before then. Hopefully we can be done prior to 6, so that's why I'm hoping. And I, don't, I didn't really think that we're going to necessarily get every single item down. I thought we might have to redo this at some point. But and, and, and we, I just wanted to touch base before we saw, did the tri-board tomorrow. In case anybody else had any questions. So if, if David, you want to keep going, um, I'm, I'm listening and I just need to, uh, you know, be here for five minutes. So I'm not going to be talking. All right. So what would be helpful if uh, just keep on moving through the budgets? Whatever you would like. That's fine. So let's do that. Uh, the interest okay. of I'm property and liability insurance increase of 19,000. That's based upon the renewal, renewal agreement that we uh, uh, signed on the 19th of March. I'm gonna to continue to the police side. Um, all right, some painful cuts here. Uh, the uh, police of chief wanted to have a traffic enforcement officer. Um, in discussing that with him, uh, he agreed to with, uh, hold that uh, position off for a year. So that's $46,000 decrease to his uh, salary line. Okay. And then for his clerical staff, to, who he wanted to bring in a second clerical worker to help with the accreditation process for the department, he agreed to put that on hold for one year. So that's 17400 Um Painful choices uh, here, but uh, this is what he has said he could do for us. Is, is David, is that giving everybody a 2%? I just wanted to double check. Is that, did you just uh, go down the salaries on voted for 2020 and did 2% on all of them? Yeah, so not not everybody gets 2%. There's a bunch of contracts in at play here. There's the uh, uh, police union contract increase. Uh, there is the chief of police's a uh, contractual Good increase. Um, and are and, they over 2%? Uh, the Looks chief like the chief is. That's more than 2%. 2.88 it says. 
Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's possible to touch base with them on that. Anything over two percent to see if there's anything there. The the only other thing on police did you did on the canine unit? Do we have a canine? You know, I'm unclear about that. I uh, we did have a canine unit. It was funded through a grant. Yeah. Uh, I'm not clear we have a canine at this point. I donated money personally to that. Yeah. I, I thought we just didn't have it anymore. I thought he, I don't know if the dog passed away or something happened. I thought that, that he retired the dog. I haven't tracked the dog. Okay. Well, maybe there's, we could ask the chief about that. <laughs> yep. Thanks. All right, moving on to fire again. Painful choices. Uh, the fire. Uh, the fire chief wanted to bring in a new uh, position with IT experience at eighty-five thousand um, dollars, and uh, he's not not happy with this. But I did trim that budget by eighty-five grand. Uh, the rest of the the adjustments are simply transferring um, operational costs for the building and building maintenance costs it's, it's been no real decrease there communications this is for the um for the dispatch department again these are uh, uh, cuts that i had made in the F, uh, february 19th budget moving on to ambulance we thought that we were going to see a five percent increase and instead we're going to be seeing a three percent increase so that's a savings of seven thousand dollars Okay. Uh, building inspector. Okay, so um, changing uh, Didi's hours to thirty at the rate that she was going to be getting gets gets us uh, five thousand two hundred twenty nine thousand uh, five thousand two hundred twenty nine dollar savings, and then the local inspector I trimmed that, um, and that's that budget. What what what's the uh, the thirty thousand down on electrical? Uh, uh, right now, electric. We use Willie. Right? Was paid for through fund. Okay. And so, uh, given the fact that we were looking at a shortfall at the February budget, uh, I trimmed that cost because the, the revolving fund can support that that uh, service. So we'll still have an electrical inspector. It's just going to come out of the revolving. Yep. Okay. So it's a user fee. Yep. Okay. Great. Plumbing Thank gas. You. Sure. Plumbing gas inspector. Uh, no but change. Just I, one. Just sorry, David. Um, I just wanted to jump over and chime in here. Is there any way uh, there in uh, the building inspector? The all of a sudden we went from the meals and the mileage from, uh, you know, having it voted at two nine. 290 up to 1,680. It's up 479 percent meals and mileage. Can we lower that back down? Because we're uh, we're combining the gas and, and plumbing inspector meals and mileage, and consolidating that under one budget. There's no real change in the overall budget. Oh, it's okay. Thanks. Just moving the stone again. Right. So it's zeroed out there. I see it. Okay. Got it. All right. The school department revised downward their. Um, budget ask by about $139,000, which means that their increase uh, is 1.69%. That really helped a lot. Thank you, school department. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, highway division. Uh, um, I didn't, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I didn't understand where the cut in education came from. Uh, this is something that they decided to put their curriculum development uh, director a new position that they were going to introduce in FY21. They decided to put that on hold for one year. Okay, thank you. Sure. And then there's a million other little adjustments that they made. Okay. Highway, um, there's an opportunity here with the... Uh, uh, fuel costs. Uh, we uh, spend. Uh, we've budgeted for something like fifty-five thousand dollars for fuel. Uh, we're out to bid right now. Uh, the bid 
bids are due on May 18th at 5 p.m. And I have until May 20th to uh, lock in a price. Uh, given where we are with uh, the fuel uh, prices worldwide, I'm hoping that we get a lucky break. If we do get a lucky break, I will adjust fuel uh, down in all departments that consume fuel by whatever percentage savings. And then whatever that savings is in, in dollars, I hope to apply to OPEB. So in a couple of weeks, I'll know that. Okay. Moving on to snow and ice by statute, we got to keep that, uh, that uh, budget line level at the least. Moving on to uh, street lights, uh, I, I, uh, re we got a lucky break on our energy costs for electricity, so I reduced that number by $1,000. Sewer Enterprise Fund, I th think I didn't make any adjustments there, but again, if we get some good prices for fuel, we'll uh, make those adjustments. Water, I'm still looking at water. I may reduce that water salary line item. Um, I have to talk to the select board about that. Building maintenance, I deleted uh, the uh, uh, secondary position that was going to be a new ask there. That's a painful cut, 46,130. Oh, I'm sorry, David, what was that again? So on 490, building maintenance, they were adding a new position to that uh, uh, building maintenance uh, salary line. Okay. So, I cut that uh, new position, uh, so the, the reduction is $46,130. Okay, thank you. And the same is true for cemetery. Deleted the new laborer, savings of $14,468. Okay. And no, Chris is not happy with that. You may hear something. Uh, Board of Health uh, didn't make any change from February. Council on Aging, I didn't make any change from February. Uh, veterans, uh, I made an adjustment of $1,000 downwards so that um, um, we, uh, this is, this is a complete guessing game with veterans benefits. A veteran is eligible for be benefits if he or she resides in the town for one day. So, uh, people move around the landscape where they think they can get the best benefits. Uh, so this is, this is a budget that could change wildly from month to month. Oliver uh, Smith Will, 100 bucks, statutory cable enterprise. I reduced the number of hours that was being asked uh, and uh, savings of $6,773. Uh, $6, um, library, I just made a small adjustment for, to bring the library salaries down to 2%. Park and Rec Commission, uh, again, I had to keep the salary at 2%. Historic Commission, they've not spent their budget in like two or three years. So I just went through and reduced everything to $100 per line. Uh, if, they need, uh, if they need more money, we can uh, renegotiate this one, but they just don't seem to spend any. Debt. Um, if you remember in the f free cash, um, in the free cash plan, we're adding an additional one hundred thousand dollars to pay down short-term principal in debt in order to build capacity for borrowing within the levy, so that we have some prayer of having a capital plan over the years. Um, I don't see a whole lot of free cash going into capital and I don't see any appetite to do a debt exclusion.
Gujan. So that the only other real place to get money from is to borrow within the levy. Mm -hmm. So in order to add that capacity to the levy, uh, we're in, investing a hundred thousand dollars more than we are required to uh, to uh, short-term principal inside the levy. State assessments, that's rip and read from house two budget. Uh, unclassified number one. Um, the only adjustment is that I had originally zeroed out uh, OPEB. I've been able to scrape together about $9,000 to put back in there. And I'm willing to put more back in as we can achieve savings elsewhere. Uh, classified num unclassified number two. I think this is, uh, let me, I have a weird view here. <laughs> unclassified number two. Okay, so police fire volunteer accident insurance. I've uh, adjusted that downwards by a thousand dollars. I think that we'll be able to knock on wood, uh, afford it at uh, $44,000. The bill typically comes in less than that. Okay. And then offsets and overlay. Um, uh, we had a presentation by the assessors when we had looked at that budget beforehand. They had requested a $75,000 overlay. I reduced that by $25,000. Uh, so we have an overlay of $50,000. This is something that we may want to watch very closely because if there are if there is a decline in residential or commercial property values, and there are uh, there are the rebates from the assessors back to the property owners, this is where that rebate comes from. So uh. um, I'm probably not expressing this technically correctly, but you get the idea. Yeah. David, yeah. Um, this is Sue. Um, I, in my conversations with Dan, he's concerned with that reduction, uh, primarily due to the uh, anaerobic digester that Barstow's will most likely uh, file an abatement on. Yeah. So if we're giving, uh, if we're abating and in exemptions, um, you know, 30 to 35,000. And the bill that we just sent, sorry, the dog is back in the scene. <laughs> um, and a cat. <laughs> but um, if, it, if we're looking at somewhere around a forty thousand dollar abatement uh, to personal property uh, from the anaerobic digester, that's going to leave us really short. Yeah, we have a kitty of over one hundred twenty thousand dollars in the overlay already, so we're going to be adding fifty thousand to that. Um, but yeah, I agree that the, these are unprecedented times, and so we may want to take a closer look at this uh, particular expense. David, can I say something? Dan, yeah. Uh, yesterday I looked at the overlay account and the balances, and I think we can get by with 50 for this year coming up. Yeah. Uh, but it may require a larger influx of cash for fiscal 22. If it turns what out kind, that-, that What that's kind of cash do we need for 22? Uh, if the if the digester is ruled to be exempt, if they go to the ATB, we could be looking at giving them back between eighty five and one hundred and thirty thousand for three years. Which year would that be in? Uh that would be a fiscal twenty two slash twenty three expenditure. Okay, but there's okay. enough to cover, I think, right now with what we have. Given but maybe we may want to restore some of that 25 in order to uh, position ourselves for next year and the year after. 
I'm sorry, just without taking up too much time, could you just quickly explain what this abatement is about for the digester? Uh, actually, no. Okay. Abatement. <laughs> needless, well, quick summary, they're claiming total exemption. We're saying they're not. Okay. All right. The company that's that owns the, the digester. Gotcha. Okay. So we're sent about a bill for this fiscal year, which they're appealing. And I'm assuming they will appeal our fiscal 21 bill as well. Okay. All right. So I'm, 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 I'm more than willing to be flexible on the 25,000. Uh, if that puts us in a better position for FY 21, 22, 23. And that I think is the budget. Okay. We want to touch on the revenue side at all, David. Sure. Great. Let me go to that part of my. Back on February nineteenth, when I presented the budget, the revenues uh, looked pretty good. We, good times are rolling in. Um, and what a difference a month makes. So the revenues are broken into four categories, table one, table two, table three, table four. Table one is the property tax levy, and that's pretty much a uh, formula. Um, the Dan and I put our heads together in terms of our new growth, which is the only real variable out there. And we, uh, uh, we uh, agreed upon a figure of $140,000. It's probably going to be higher by about 20,000. Uh, if it is, uh, you should save that. It, uh, the defense in depth uh, plans uh, contemplates that you're going to be able to save that into stabilization for future years work uh, use. State aid, um, long conversation with the guy from the Department of Revenue this morning. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where state aid is going these days. Um, it could be a 50% reduction. It could be no reduction whatsoever. Certainly, there's not going to be an increase. Um, David? Yep. You're using house two numbers? House two numbers. Okay. Um, when we say house two, that means the governor's numbers. So the governor's budget proposal that he gave to us on uh, Jan in late January. Uh, local receipts, that's where we took our big hit. Um, I put together a, a local receipt projection based upon the assumption that we're going to have a very weak first and second quarter of FY21 with uh, two epidemiological surges in August. Uh, July, August, and then uh, November, December. Uh, then mm -hmm. after that, a gradual recovery, uh, which again, if we can accelerate the, uh, the faster, the better is going to be for us. All told, that is a reduction of about $500,000 in revenue in that, in that quarter. Um, and by tomorrow, I should have a sense of our March revenues, our April revenues, rather, April 2020, so that uh, I get a sense of what the end of the fiscal year this year looks like. Our enterprise receipts are based upon operating costs and also by um, the administrative costs. I had, uh, Linda and I had worked for a long time on revising the administrative chargebacks. We came up with a presentation to the select board and the finance committee uh, that showed a $109,000 decrease in revenue to the general fund based upon the revisions in the formula for the enterprise administrative chargebacks. Select board asked if we could split the difference and not have a $109,000 decrease, but rather $50,000 decrease. 
Uh, we changed one of the variables in, the, in a way that we can defend. And I can get into the details of that if you want to know. And so we have a $59,000 increase over that uh, original estimate, and that's used to uh, support the general fund. And that's where we are with revenues. David, yep. quick question. Just, I, I see the host agreements with medical marijuana and adult use marijuana. Are that, is that something we can still count on, the 35 and the 50? Yeah, so the medical marijuana host agreement of, uh, uh, in effect for the, the Heirloom Collective, THC, mm -hmm. uh, they have opened their doors. So we're going, okay. to, we're going to get that. Okay. Probably get a little bit more than that. All right. Uh, the host agreement for the adult use marijuana right now, the, um, the governor has uh, closed down all recreational uh, retail sales. Uh, that's going to reopen at some point. We have uh, THC has a uh, uh, license for adult use. And then there's a second one that, um, uh, may or may not go into uh, commercial uh, uh, space at the mall. Okay. Um, the fifty thousand is the minimum payment for adult use under THC's community host agreement. Uh, we're still negotiating the community host agreement with the second uh, adult use marijuana, and the three percent <laughs> tax revenue sharing is not shown up as a receipt at all. That's not in the, these numbers. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, the ambulance rebate is uh, something that we should look at. Uh, uh, that number is probably too high, but, but we won't, I won't know that until a little bit later on. Okay. David, quickly, so the ambulance rebate, you don't think we're going to get a full rebate? I mean, um, is, are they not not as busy this year? I thought they might be just as busy with the COVID, but at the same time, yes, they don't have the students and they don't have the traffic, but I thought they could be a wash. Yes, so we happen to be blessed by the living in the uh, county that has the least number of COVID patients per thousand. Um, and so that's a very good thing, but that does mean that we're not going to get as much revenue from the ambulance. Okay. And I haven't seen the numbers recently. I know that they've been updated. So as soon as I get that, I'll have a chance to review it. Why, why is that considered a rebate? Our contract is structured that we pay them um, a certain amount, call it 100, uh, 200 Eighty thousand dollars. Thereabouts. If they um, if they bring in receipts above um, seven hundred thousand dollars, then whatever excess is shared back to the town. Oh. So it's all based upon volume. I see. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's it for revenue, right? That's it for revenue. All right. So uh, I um, I don't want to keep everyone out here and, get, and take looks. And now that David went over most of the stuff, we still have to go through all the uh, – down, or, or maybe you hit them all. Did you do all of the um, enterprise funds? Yes. Okay, then then you've looked at a chance to look at everything. So um, um, I did not go through the enterprise funds myself yet. Um, but if I was to look, is it did, did you go just go across the board, David, and then take their salaries and just did 2% on everybody? 
Uh, they're all union, so they get whatever the union contract is. Okay. All right. So um, I guess we'll just meet again tomorrow unless you want to add anything else. I do have one one question I'd like to pose to David, and that is um, there are several positions that we agreed, that we had agreed we would fund that we have decided against now in light of the, the COVID challenge. And, um, and I, I, I just was curious if you could articulate why uh, the HR person is, um, should not be should not be treated you know the same uh, so what I did was uh, if we agreed upon a position in this fiscal year um, I did not I did not trim that position uh, if we had proposed it for uh, next year I was much more willing to uh, say sorry but we can't afford it oh I see the, the the inf the inf the marching orders I got from the, the from the select board was that there weren't going to be any layoffs, and that's for good reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, are going to to as much in unemployment as you get right. in the uh, in the uh, lost uh, uh, expense in the uh, for that position. Um, the, we don't have the bench strength, so if you lay somebody off, there's nobody to do the work. Right. Um, yeah. If you add to the human misery, then they're much more likely to get uh, sick, and that just adds to our general uh, problem. And if you uh, take away their salary, that means they're not contributing to the economy. So, so four solid reasons, uh, two short-term and, and two uh, big picture. Um, okay. So HR is something that the select board very much wanted to see um, in the current budget. And so that position is preserved. Uh, we are obliged uh, by law to keep that position open for Ed while he's on deployment. Um, so that position is not going to go away in the future. So yeah, uh, if, we if we can bring in a seasoned professional who work is on a temporary basis and save us seventeen thousand just in those costs? Uh, that seemed like a good deal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. So, have we covered everything, Amy? I I think so. I think right. so. Uh, we'll meet we again tomorrow. At Okay. Do we have the login material for tomorrow? Because I don't think I've seen that. It's on the, uh, it, yeah, it's on your uh, agenda. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Can I give you a couple of dates? Sure. All right. So tomorrow you're meeting Triboard with the select board. This will be obviously the, the major focus. Um, we have not had time to talk about a lot of these cuts with some of the departments. And so we should set up a process by which they come in and defend the original ask. And we make whatever uh, adjustments are uh, prudent and long-term. Um, I was thinking that that would be on uh, May 20th, the next select board meeting. By June 10th, I would like, uh, we need to post the warrant and June 18th is the town meeting day. Uh, we're still working through the logistics of being able to do that safely. And June 30th is the drop dead deadline for holding a town meeting if we have to defer. Oh boy. Okay. All right, so. Um, you need a motion? Yeah, motion. Sure, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank all you. Right. Bye, Good everybody. Luck. Thank you, David. Thank you, Susan, and everybody else on here. Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. everybody. Right. And I know this is not fun at all, but uh, we um, we'll get through this. We're.